जय हिंद हेलो कैडेट्स आई एम मिस्टर प्रमोद सूर्यवंशी फ्रॉम डिफेंस करियर एकेडमी औरंगाबाद एंड टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग एन इम्पॉर्टेंट आर्टिकल फ्रॉम द फिजिक्स सिलेबस ऑफ एन डी ए रिटर्न एग्जाम दैट इज बैरोमीटर सो वी विल बी बेसिकली स्टडिंग अबाउट वॉट इज बैरोमीटर वॉट इज इट्स कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑन विच प्रिंसिपल ऑफ फिजिक्स डज इट वर्क इट्स एक्चुअल वर्किंग and some of the important applications of barometer okay so starting with at concept of atmospheric air pressure imagine uh, that you have a vessel filled with water or any other liquid for that matter and you have been given a straw to say drink this water or this juice from the vessel now important thing is suppose you are holding a cold drink water and a straw and you want to drink the cold drink using the straw what's our usual procedure we first suck the air out of this straw so we use the power of our lungs to suck the air out of the straw now as a result of that what happens is the liquid inside the straw the level begins to rise so it reaches the open end and then it reaches our mouth how exactly does this happen on a very detailed level if we consider first imagine there is no sucking of air so you have left this just like it is okay that means this apparatus is just like this you are not sucking air out of the straw now what exactly is the situation here first there is liquid inside as well as outside the straw further the liquid level outside and liquid level inside the straw both are equal because the air pressure inside and outside the straw on both sides are equal and that is why because of this equal air pressure on both sides there is no movement of the liquid or there is no movement of the fluid now in this connection a very important principle of physics says that a liquid will always a flow from higher pressure to lower pressure so if you want to make the liquid flow first you have to create a pressure difference right now here there is no pressure difference pressure inside as well as outside the straw both are equal so there is no pressure difference no movement of liquid whatsoever now so you use the straw you suck out air from the straw now what happens when you suck the air out of the straw the pressure inside becomes less than pressure outside so by sucking the air out of the straw you have created a pressure difference wherein pressure inside the straw has reduced has decreased and pressure outside the straw has remained the same that is equal to the atmospheric air pressure but because now the pressure inside has decreased we have created a pressure difference again whenever there is a pressure difference liquid always a flow from high pressure to low pressure now in comparison pressure outside is greater than pressure inside therefore this liquid will begin to move into the straw and the liquid level inside the straw will begin to rise it will begin to increase okay and it will go on increasing till the equilibrium in pressure is established that is when the pressure difference has become zero then the liquid movement will stop till then it will continue okay now imagine another situation you have been given a straw whose length is very 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 large so you have a straw having a very 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 large length say 200 meter 300 meter or 500 meter and now what you have done is on this side you have sucked all the air out so that inside the straw there is a vacuum there is total vacuum not a single air particle is there in the straw now what will happen first 
because you took air out of the straw you have created a pressure difference because of that the atmospheric air pressure outside will force the liquid level in the straw to rise but as the liquid level goes on rising we know the hydrostatic pressure of this liquid level which is given by h rho g it will also start to increase as h has started to increase and therefore the the height of the liquid level inside the straw will increase only as long as the pressure or the hydrostatic pressure inside the straw becomes equal to the atmospheric air pressure outside so once this condition is attained then the liquid level inside the straw will attain equilibrium so it will rise up to that height where both these pressure become equal and then it will stop and it will remain in equilibrium now so this is basically the principle of working of any given barometer so you have a liquid contained in a liquid column of height h the pressure exerted by that liquid column of height h is equal to atmospheric air pressure as long as this condition is maintained the liquid level inside that column will be in equilibrium the height depends on what liquid we are using suppose in this connection now if we use a water the height is approximately 10.24 meter because the density of water is 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube if we use if we want to use water here then this straw or this tube must have a height slightly greater than 10.24 meters because because the density of water is 10 to the 3 what if we used mercury whose density is 13600 si units that is kilogram per meter cube its height will be simply 76 cm or 0.76 meters this is the reason that in barometer we always use mercury why because of its large density the height of mercury column which is required to produce pressure equal to atmospheric pressure that height is only 0.76 meter or 76 cm roughly 76 cm is this much but imagine you decided to use water in the barometer how much height will you require 10.24 meters that is like roughly 35 to 36 feet now it is not practical to actually have a barometer based on water that is why in every barometer we use mercury or we prefer mercury why because of higher density the height of mercury column required is just 76 cm that makes it easy to install easy to operate easy to handle so how do you exactly make it first you need a table uh, sorry you need a tube whose length is little more than 76 cm little more maybe 3 4 cm more next you take that tube like this it is very much like a very very long test tube next you fill it with mercury you fill it completely with mercury then you take another vessel containing some quantity of mercury previously so there is some mercury in the vessel already now what you do is you take this glass tube filled with mercury you close this open end you close it with your thumb you invert it with thumb still closing the tube then you dip this end of the tube inside this vessel and the moment this end has gone below the mercury level then you release your thumb now what will happen is now here 
this liquid level this tube is an inverted position okay this tube is an inverted position its length is little more than 76 cm so some mercury will move out of the tube and into the vessel but finally the height of the mercury level will attain equilibrium at a value of 76 centimeters and then it will remain in equilibrium so the tube that is required for this kind of application must have markings of length printed all over the tube you need a glass tube where the divisions of length are printed on it so that you can take the reading of the height of the mercury column here next we also know another, another important principle at sea level the atmospheric air pressure is highest but as you move to regions of greater altitudes atmospheric air pressure goes on reducing now as a result of that what happens is as you take this barometer so if atmospheric air pressure is reducing what will happen to h it will also reduce remember now you are using only mercury in the barometer so the only parameter which will change as a result of change in atmospheric air pressure is height of the mercury column so if you shift to a region of larger altitude the atmospheric air pressure will reduce and so will be the value of h so as a result of this you can do measurement of pressure at a greater altitude you can use it in a reverse way that is you can move to a greater altitude a region at greater altitude there you can take the reading of the atmospheric air pressure at that level at that place you compare that value with the atmospheric air pressure at sea level and you can actually calculate the altitude of that location from the sea level this is how we can use a mercury barometer to determine the height of a particular location from the sea level so we say na ki this this region is situated at this much height from the sea level like where i am conducting the lecture aurangabad city it is at approximately at a height of 570 meter above sea level how do you come to know that simple take a mercury barometer take it to sea level find h height of the mercury column in equilibrium calculate atmospheric air pressure at that location take that barometer bring it to this location again take the reading of h height of the mercury column calculate the atmospheric air pressure with difference in atmospheric air pressure you can determine the height of this location from the sea level this is how you can actually use a mercury barometer to know height of a particular place above sea level okay that's all for now